Let's look at the veins, arteries, and nerves of the shoulder region. As you'll see, the main bundle of vessels and nerves lies behind the clavicle and behind both pectoral muscles as it passes from the base of the neck to the underside of the upper arm. To understand how things are arranged up here, where the main vessels come up out of the chest and the main nerves emerge from the vertebral column, there are some key structures that we need to understand. The first ribs, the cervical vertebrae, and the scalene muscles. Let's take a look at them. Here's the first rib, below and behind the clavicle. This much of it is bone, and this much of it is costal cartilage. The two first ribs define the opening at the top of the chest, the superior thoracic aperture. The main artery to the upper extremity, the subclavian artery, crosses the first rib here. The subclavian vein crosses it here, right behind the medial end of the clavicle. Here are the vertebrae, the first thoracic with the first rib, and the seventh, sixth, and fifth cervical. Let's take the clavicle away so that we can see the vertebrae better. The main spinal nerves to the upper extremity emerge here, between the transverse processes. The spinal nerves that we're concerned with are numbered C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. These two landmark muscles, the anterior scalene and the middle scalene, which are attached to the first rib here and here, guard the exit of these vital structures. The vein runs in front of the anterior scalene, the artery runs behind it. Between the two scalene muscles, the roots of the brachial plexus also emerge. There are two possibly confusing things that we have to live with. The first is that there's a nerve root named C8, even though there's no eighth cervical vertebra. The second confusing thing is that the main artery and vein change their names as they go along. Here they're called the subclavian vessels, here they're called the axillary vessels, and from here on down they're called the brachial vessels. The structures themselves don't change, just the names. Let's start by looking at the veins. We can be quite brief about this since the veins parallel the arteries in most important respects. It'll be helpful to start on the outside and progress inward, removing some muscles as we go along. Here, in the groove between pectoralis major and deltoid, is the cephalic vein coming up from the arm. It's a vein that doesn't have an accompanying artery. To see where it's going, we'll remove pectoralis major. Here's the cephalic vein. Together with other veins from the shoulder region, it joins the main vein of the upper extremity, the subclavian vein. We'll focus our attention on this important vein. The subclavian vein comes up from the arm and passes beneath pectoralis minor. Emerging from beneath pectoralis minor, it passes over the outer surface of the first rib. Here's the first rib and under the subclavius muscle and the clavicle. To follow the subclavian vein further, we'll remove the clavicle, the subclavius muscle, and this muscle, the sternocleidomastoid. Here we are behind the medial end of the clavicle, which went from here, this is the cut end of the clavicle, to here, this was the sternoclavicular joint. Here's pectoralis minor. Here's the curve of the first rib, and here's scalenus anterior. These structures, the subclavian artery and the brachial plexus, we'll be seeing in a minute. Let's follow the vein. Just as the subclavian vein reaches the medial border of the first rib, which is here, it's joined from above by the main vein of the head and neck, the internal jugular vein. Together, the subclavian and internal jugular veins form the brachiocephalic vein. The brachiocephalic vein passes medial to the first rib and enters the chest. The dome of the pleura lies immediately behind it. Here's the pleura. To follow the brachiocephalic vein into the chest, we'll remove these muscles. And we'll also remove 
this part of the anterior chest wall. We'll also remove the other clavicle. Now we're looking inside the chest. Here are the divided ends of the two first ribs. And here's the divided end of the sternum. Here are the two brachiocephalic veins, the right and the left. A little to the right of the midline, they join together to form the superior vena cava. Apart from what we've just seen, the veins of the region correspond so closely to the arteries that we don't need to consider them separately. We'll move on now to look at the arteries. In the dissections that follow, all the accompanying veins have been removed to simplify the picture. To get a good look at the artery as it runs from here to here, we need to remove pectoralis major. Now only three structures stand between us and it. Here's the artery, passing behind the anterior scalene muscle, behind the clavicle, and behind pectoralis minor. Three names for one artery, subclavian, axillary, brachial. Let's see where it begins. Here's a deeper dissection with the chest wall removed. Here are the divided ends of the clavicle, the first rib with the anterior scalene muscle, and the second rib. In the middle, we're looking at the trachea and the common carotid arteries, the right and the left. On the right side, the subclavian artery arises, along with the common carotid, from the brachiocephalic trunk, which in turn arises from the arch of the aorta. On the left side, the subclavian artery arises directly from the arch of the aorta. In the early part of its course, as it passes over the dome of the pleura, the subclavian artery gives off some major branches, which we'll see in other parts of the atlas. These are the internal thoracic, the thyrocervical trunk, and the vertebral. In addition, the subclavian gives off two branches to the back and shoulder region. These are the transverse cervical and the suprascapular arteries. These two are variable. Sometimes they arise here, sometimes here. The main artery, now called the axillary, next gives off two branches behind pectoralis minor. They're the thoracoacromial and the lateral thoracic arteries. In the axilla, three more branches arise, often close together, the subscapular and the two circumflex humeral arteries, the anterior and the posterior. The posterior circumflex humeral winds round behind the neck of the humerus. Finally, the artery, now known as the brachial artery, passes on down the upper arm. 